Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the reading of, of the word of the Lord, we invite you to stand up. We're going to open up our Bibles in the Gospel according to John. John chapter 4. We're going to read verse 7. We're going to read only the first part of um, verse 7, Gospel according to John. That's it. Only the first part there. A woman of Sam Samaria came to draw water. Came a woman from Samaria to draw water. Lord, I want to praise your holy name. We ask you that you may bless, through your word, may bless your people. We pray in the name of, holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. The last song that we just sang, a part of it says the following. My name is Jesus. I am the fount of waters. Isn't it true? And the text that we just read speaks of a woman that came to draw water. And the word says that Jesus, he was passing by and he found that it was necessary, he thought that it was necessary to enter into the city of Samaria. And he went and he entered into that city and he stayed there near a um, well called the well of Jacob. And the Bible describes that it was around noon, almost six o'clock according to the Bible. And we can think Samaria, sun of noon, a heat, very harsh, like the same as in Bahia, sitting in Brazil. And I ask you, my brother and sister, draw water at noon? If, if it were me, a good citizen of Bahia, I would come at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, or well, schooler, or after 6 uh, p.m., where it was cooler, but draw water in a arid region, like a desert, high temperature at noon. Look, whoever does this is someone that is very thirsty, very thirsty. So she went there to draw water at noon because she was very thirsty. And the Psalm number 42, verse 1 and 2 says the following. Like the deer shouts for the waters, uh, my soul desires for you. And it continues. My soul thirst thirsting for God well wow, what God what type of God is this of the living God that of the God that is alive and then the psalmist says the following he asks a question when will I will I enter and I will present myself in your presence or in other words, in what moment will I be able to enter into the presence of the living God in order for the thirst of my soul 
may, might be quenched. That was the quest question of the psalmist. And maybe you, my brother and sister, you who entered here tonight in this place, this might be your desire of presenting yourself into the presence of the living God in order to have your soul um, in order for your soul to be have its thirst quenched that's why in the Bible uh, it says that it was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria because there there was a woman that was that had a great necessity she went there to um, satisfy her necessity that's where why she went there to the fount of Jacob how many times men women humanity when they're going through a great necessity they they present themselves in the fount of Jacob or in other words in a place where they can receive a word a water that can then even if it is for a short period of time satisfy their thirst and that was then the situation of that woman and Jesus he went there we can say he went there to answer to the need of that woman he went there to quench the thirst of the soul of that woman but there were barriers when Jesus began to have a conversation with that woman the first problem arose that was um, mentioned by herself her herself how can you being a Jew pray for me who, who am a, speak to me who uh, who am a Samaritan don't you know that Jews and Samaritans don't talk to one another that was already this blockage in her mind because they, w they could not have uh, union and peace or fellowship between Jews and Samaritans so then Jesus went there to finish this problem to resolve this problem once and for all God lo loves everyone indiscriminately it doesn't matter from what tribe or for what race the color of your eyes what you did or you didn't do God is not worried about those things the love of God is unconditional is not conditioned to anything that may exist so that was the was the the first relief for that woman look now a Jew is speaking to a Samaritan and God is speaking with man the Bible says that it's not he didn't say once God speaks to us many times in dreams when you go to sleep God reveals himself to him God can speak through a child to a song that was sang of a text of the Bible God speaks to everyone and God's desire is to quench everybody's thirst so then the Lord Jesus began to speak to this woman and during the dialogue the Lord had revealed that she had made several commitments many pacts many covenants and but none of them had worked out sometimes men sometimes women they are like this they make a covenant they make an alliance an agreement and they think that that business is going to work out and there is going to be a solution to their problem to their anxiety to their need and then afterwards they end up end up being frustrated because they deposited their trust on men but God recommends that we do not trust men we should trust in God and the word says that 
after those, after God spoke to do this woman, after g delivering um, revelation to her, she said, look, I'm beginning to see. I see that you are a prophet. My brethren, she was not seeing anything. Prophet Jesus. One day, Jesus asked to his disciples, What are people saying about me? Oh, they say that you're a prophet. And how about you, disciples? Then one of them said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. That one was seeing everything clearly. He was saying, from afar, very clearly. You know why that happened? Because the Father, God Father, had revealed to him. And we can only see Christ and God reveals that to us. And tonight, this Samaritan woman, she's here. And God is revealing to her that Jesus is, is the Christ the one that was sent by God, the Savior of the world. But that was not enough for that woman. I told you that she was thirsty and she was really very thirsty. So then the Lord began to speak with her and she asked a question. Look, the Jews say that the place to adore God is in Jerusalem. My parents say that there is a mount that is nearby. That's the place where we should adore God. And Jesus says something that is, that is very interesting to her. Jesus said, Salvation came from the Jews. Did you know that, church? That salvation came from the Jews? The whole Bible is from the Jews. Abram, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve children of Jacob, every character of the Bible, you can say, Solomon, Samson, David, Daniel, Zechariah, Malachi, the twelve apostles, everyone was Jew. And Jesus was? He was also a Jew. And the Bible says that the Jews They are the natural branch of the olive tree. And Jesus is the olive tree. And the, the ones that are not Jews, which is my case, I was drafted to the olive tree, um, contrary to nature. It was not supposed for me to be. But God operated a miracle in my life and crafted me. Now I'm participating on the olive tree. And the Jews, they are natural branches. That's why the word says that you pray, you should pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and those that do this will prosper. I will bless you, those who bless you, and I will curse who will curse you, whoever curses you. Salvation comes from the Jews. There is no Christianity without Judaism. Christ is Jew. We have to honor them, respect them, and pray for them. And salvation uh, comes from the Jews. And there is more. Huh? The place to adore is not here on this mount. It is not here in Samaria. The place to adore have to pray for Jerusalem. The place to adore is not also in Jerusalem. Because the, the true worshipers will praise the Lord in spirit and truth. So every time we are in fellowship with God, we are adoring God. Whatever we are. That's what later the servants of the Lord, they said, 
Don't you know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? And that woman, she found one thing out. She had to learn how to adore the Lord in spirit, spirit and in truth. So then she said that, I know that the Messiah, I know that the Messiah that is called the Christ is coming. <coughs> and when he comes, he will um, proclaim to us everything. So then he said that he was going to come and she was not seeing it very clearly. Now she's, she's saying that she knew. She didn't know anything. There's a song in Brazil that says that, in, in Brazil that says, Who, whoever knows things knows much more than I. Sometimes men have their own concepts, their, their own understandings about God, about Christ, about religion, about this and that. And they think that they are right. And this, instead of quenching the thirst of the soul, it causes more thirst. So then the person that was in doubt regarding adoration, they thought that she was that person was seeing everything, was not. The person that thought that knew everything but knew nothing. Because Jesus was speaking to her. The Messiah was speaking to her. The Christ was speaking to her. And it was still awaiting the Christ to come to her, to speak to her. Sometimes the person goes to the well of Jacob. Jesus is present. He speaks to the person and she still leaves with questions. Was it God that spoke to me? Was it the Messiah that spoke to me? Was it the prophet? And what was the answer of Jesus to that woman? He said, I am. I am the one who speaks to you, my brother and sister. Who is speaking to you tonight? What are we, who are you waiting for to speak with you? It's not a prophet that is speaking to you. It's not man who is speaking to you. It's Christ that is revealing himself to your life. It's Jesus that he's here. He's filling your heart. He's the one who is blessing you. He's removed the anguish, sadness, and pain, the anxiety. He's the one that is quenching the thirst of your soul. It's Christ. Because he is the living God. Only he can do this. I am. I'm the one who speaks to you. But you might ask, why is God speaking to me? Why is God speaking to me? Why is Jesus revealing himself to, my, to me? Why has he set up this meeting with me tonight? What is the reason? I don't know. Oh, my, my reason I know is thirst for God. That's why he came to the well. But for what reason God thought it was necessary for you to pass by here? Why? God was Jesus because Jesus is God Jesus is speaking to you to me to each one of us you know why because he was seeking you do you know my sister that Jesus was looking for you and you know why Because Jesus is looking for a worshiper. He was there, he was saying, the true worshipers are going to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the Father seeks them. God, on this day, he looked for you and he found you. So you can be a true worshiper. 
in order for you to testify that because that's what that woman did when she left that place she understood the whole project of God for her life she didn't drink a drop of water on that day on the place but inside of her uh, found a water was flu that made her jump to eternal life and the project of God tonight for you my brother and sister is exactly this is that this word may become in your life a fount of water that may carry you bring you to the eternity of God and that this time that you're living here you may be like that woman she had a meeting with Jesus she became a worshiper and a preacher of the word of the Lord she entered into the city and I said look I told spoke to a man and he is the Christ and everyone believed in the words of that woman and do you know why because she believed on what Jesus spoke to her that day and the word says the following believe in Jesus and you will be saved and at that day she was saved because she believed in Jesus do you believe in Jesus do I believe in Jesus yes so we both are saved by the word of the Lord and not only you not only I but the promise is regarding to your whole house and your family members believe in Jesus and you'll be saved you and your household and that's what Jesus did that day he saved more than one house he saved more than one family he saved many families and the Lord brought you here my sister especially in order for you to be a worshiper and through your life many lives may come into the presence of the Lord so as you view that woman that received the invitation to be here she's going through a trial with her child the Lord is speaking to her through your testimony I will be moving on your life on your behalf on your benefit on the benefit of your home of your house and your family members you just need to believe and testify and everything all the other things will be added on to you
Lord to Jesus. Let us stand up. Let us have a word of adoration to the name of the Lord. Lord, we want to praise you. Give you praise, Lord. Because we were lost, but you found us. We praise you because I was so rejoiced when we, you found us. For the waters of your spirit are moving here tonight. They are operating cures, deliverance, and salvation through your Holy Spirit. We praise you for your great love because our soul is, is not empty anymore. We are happy because we serve a living God. We praise the Lord because you are great, because you are powerful, because you are King of glory. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, our life is it's filled with trials. Every day we face difficulties because of everything that rises up as opposition in order to make us leave the presence of the Lord. And tonight the Lord is speaking to a woman that entered here. She's going lately uh, go through a great trial with her son and the Lord is saying that according to her definition the Lord her testimony in choosing the Lord he will give you yet another victory for you so here is the promise of the Lord a lady that entered here the Lord says do not worry because God will take care of your problem and when we give us ourselves up to the Lord God take care, takes care of the rest the Lord promises that to us the church has this promise you who entered here you have this promise if you define you make a definition in the Lord and place this situation in the presence of the Lord God will take care of it amen let's pray bringing the service to a close Lord we praise praise you we praise your name Lord for another week we praise the Lord because you have helped us up, up until this point. We glorify Lord for the sustenance. We praise the Lord for the victories. We praise you Lord because one day you rescued us. You opened up our eyes. You opened up our understanding. And today we understand you can't comprehend who really is you, the, the person of the Lord Jesus. We know and we have the assurance that He's our, our Savior. And we praise you, Lord, for our opportunity. And we ask you, Lord, that you may accept our glorification. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning, we can have a special service with the children. I was going to make a surprise. They don't like... No, okay. <laughs> Today, we had... The, they had a group of brothers had... They made to um, hand out invitations and testify of what God has done, been doing. It was a great victory. 200 invitations were handed out approximately. We know that people have thirst for, for God. And tomorrow we're going to... Um, um, harvest the fruits and we're going to pray so that the Lord may once again bless us and the church is invited we're going to we're here we're going to honor the children Come down. so that the Lord may bless us greatly and I say the peace of the Lord to everyone we have still invitations here available if you still need it 
uh, peace of the Lord. Esse é o último. Agora começa de novo. Começa de novo. Não, vai de novo. Vai de novo, pode começar até de novo. Não, começar de novo. Não, começar de novo. Eu estou na transmissão. Que crise, né? Você não pode, eu só falo. Mais devagar, você muito rápido. A pessoa não tem tempo de ver, você tem que passar logo de cara.